Hey everybody, Gunnison on the cover. Today is March 3rd, 2019. And here's an interesting uh, story I came across on the internet. And this was put out by PIX11.com. That's the uh, TV station right out of here of New York. And it reads, police officers in the U.S. were charged with more than 400 rapes over a nine-year period. So, let me uh, read this story and... Uh, See what it has to say, and I'll, I'll definitely put this link in the description. I'm going to put it on the uh, Facebook page, too. You can go right to it and read it yourself. And this is something that came out recently. I don't forget the date was. I think it was like the end of 2018 or beginning of January of this year. A police officer in Prince George County, Maryland, was charged this week with raping a woman during a tra stop, bleh, traffic stop. He's pleaded not guilty, but it's a disturbing headline. Even more disturbing when you consider there are hundreds more like them, like him. Yes, hundreds, according to research from Bowling Green State University. Police officers in the U.S. were charged with forcible rape 405 times between 2005 and 2013. So that's an eight-year period. That's an average of 45 a year forcible fondling was more common with 636 incidences. Yet experts say those statistics are by no means comprehensive data on sexual assaults by police are almost non-existent, they say. Well, that's, of course, the cops don't want to keep track of the bad crap they don't because it uh, they don't like that. That's evidence against them. They only keep evidence against us. Remember that. Uh, it's not uh, just not available, said Jonathan Blanks, a research associate with the Cato Institute Project on Criminal Justice. You can only crowdsource this information. The BGSU researchers compiled their list by document cases of sworn non-federal law enforcement officers who have been arrested. But the 2016 federally funded paper, Police and Gregory, lost a... Uh, lost. A study of law enforcement officers arrested says the problem isn't limited to sexual assaults. No, of course not. There are no comprehensive statistics available on problems with police integrity, the report says, and no government entity collects data on police who are arrested. Of course not. Because the police don't want you to know the truth. They want you to know what they tell you. It's called propaganda. It adds, police sexual misconduct in cases of police sexual violence are often referred to as hidden offenses, and studies on police sexual misconduct are usually based on small samples or derived from officer surveys that are threatened by a reluctance to reveal these cases. The nation's foremost re researcher on the subject thus must often rely on published media reports. And let me just go down. See what else it has to say here. Okay, so so far it's saying why they can't get the data. That it's difficult to get the data. And it says victims include suspects and police and those police are s supposed to protect. What data available paints a jarring picture. One statistic from Stinson indicates that for every sexual assault that makes the news, there are almost <coughs> more victims on average, five more. About half the victims are children. <laughs> well, we know that. Our children say Stinson has gotten accustomed to hearing his research systems proclaiming during the work, oh my God, it's another 14-year-old. Victims can include both the people police are supposed to be chasing and those they are charged with protecting. Well, this is, again, the misconception. They don't protect us. They enforce laws. So even this report here is infected with that misbelief. Opportunities for sex-related police crimes around abound because police off, because officers operate in a low visibility environment with very little supervision. It says the potential victims of sex-related police crime include criminal suspects, but also unaccompanied victims of crime. Experts say officers who prey on people they encounter while on duty take advantage of the trust of police, the public places and police as an institution. Well, I don't put any trust in them. Okay, trust but verify. Police have a reputational advantage over anyone, especially someone accused of crime. <coughs> Offenders who seek to victimize people know this, experts say, and they strategically select victim, bolstering their chance of not getting caught. 
Researchers, researchers find that the predominance of the victims fall into at least one of several categories. Their criminal records are homeless, are sex workers, or have issues with drugs or alcohol abuse. Essentially, predatory cops are picking up people whose juries won't believe who don't trust who don't trust police. Stinson said. To be clear, the majority of police officers are good people. Yeah, well, I doubt that. I have a lot of doubt in that one. Not sexual predators. Well, they may not be sexual predators, but there are other things. Every expert in view for the story concurs on this point. Well, I think I'm an expert, and I don't concur. All right, so I'll uh, put this uh, link in the description box, and I'll also put it on uh, Gunnison Undercover Facebook page, and you can go read the full story itself. I only read parts of it. But it just shows you another pattern, more evidence, another pattern of how these clowns behave. It's just painting another picture who they really are as, as a group. And as we all know, these uh, blue narcissistic uh, syndrome uh, people and cops are infected with it, which is pretty much all of them. They live in a state of denial. They don't want to admit that there's a, a big problem in their community. And this is just another example of the problem, of more evidence of the problem in their community. This is Gunnison Undercover. Let me know what you think in the comments section. Like, share, subscribe, and uh, always watch the police. And don't believe everything they tell you. It's all copaganda. And if you see something, Record something.